so we had snowmageddon here in ohio and we are here to check out their no heat but we're gonna have to dig our way into the freaking uh unit that's behind that uh fence there let's go in here and see what's going on in the kitchen area they said it's uh not working right 64. it ain't like it's uncommon for my area but i bring my boots and my shovel so you never know you might get this sucker stuck in a ditch I've got straps, jumper cables, all that crap. Those are all things you just gotta have in the van. So I'm gonna dig this out real quick. Well, we got lucky the plow guy ended up back dragging it. So we just got a little bit more to go and we'll get in there. I dug out from underneath here. Got me a little path there. I pushed the top off, pushed, pushed it right off. That way if the economizer kicks on for air conditioning, which I'm wondering, did it possibly suck the uh, snow in and pack it in the coil or something? Who knows? Got the uh, covers off. Filters surprisingly look pretty decent. Belt was a little bit loose looking. I put a new sheave on that on August 2nd of 21. It's out here for a new cooling call. And uh, let's see what we got going on here. We got some blanks going on. Blower works. There we go. We've got some blinky blinks going on here. You can barely see it, but two blinks. One, two. Now, will they put it on the back side of this? Two blinks. System lockout. No kidding. That's that's train. Let's kill power and see if we can get her start over again. I can't really get back to my disconnect. It's back here somewhere. So let's do it the old-fashioned way, see if we can unplug that, which looks like it killed it. Here we go, reset, draft motor. Now what do we got going on? Slow blinks, slow flash, normal call for heat. Well, let's pop this cover, see if we got an igniter issue. Yeah, it's been kept clean pretty good, huh? See the pressure switch or the igniter's dirty, the flame sensor, but I don't think it, it never fires, so it ain't gonna be a flame sensor. Still, it's still blinking. Let's check power on that pressure switch. It finally shut off. We got two blinks, so let's go ahead and get down here, see if we can get this apart without disturbing it. There we go. Let's reset this thing again. Gotta be careful when you shove that on there, you don't short it against the uh, metal behind it. Let's go ahead and do resistance since we got it open. It's shown close. It's not the pressure switch. Go ahead and hook that back up. Kind of a crappy uh, diagnostic LED. It's like, uh, yeah, I'm broke. Real high tech. Pull that ignition wire off. Yep, you can hear it arcing. He's an insulated screwdriver, but we know the igniter's working or the spark ignition, so let's go ahead and kill that. Let's make sure we ain't got a bunch of rubber on the end of this thing. Trim that off a little bit. Lennox used to use a carbon fiber in here, kind of like a spark plug and it would burn off on the end. They finally went back to a wire, but we tri trimmed off several different little pieces there and uh, got a little more than I needed there. You gotta be careful when you shove it on there that you don't just jam it back, which is probably what happened. I've seen people strip it out just a little bit and then kind of bend it over the rubber. But generally, if you kind of wiggle it, you can get to slide past it onto the cable and then usually you're fine. So let's get that on there. There we go. Make sure it's not short in the ground anywhere else in here. It looks like it's gone pretty good. Across from here to there, it's all tight. Good and tight. There's the flame sensor, that looks like crap. Let's go ahead and clean that real quick. I guarantee you that's not been done for a while. That wasn't the easiest thing I've ever seen to get off. It's uh, a little dirty. Clean that up. You can see this thing's in horrible shape, but you know, when you let snow into your burner area, it tends to happen. Probably has something to do with that panel piece there missing. Uh, if it was running, it 
probably wouldn't be in there either. I mentioned before, I like my stainless steel brush there. Just good at not leaving marks in it. Anyhow, got it back in there. That is not the easiest thing I've ever seen to get in there. Igniter, I'm usually not too horribly worried about. It usually arcs through freaking anything. Let's try this again. Um, obviously, it ain't just a flame sensor, but we just clean it just to be precautious. Good stewards. Let's go up here and tell it to run. Let's see if you can hear it clicking. You can see it right there. I'm not getting any fuel though, I wonder. That's got something to do with it. Yeah, we can see the arc there. I just replaced some of these gas valves the other day on another unit. The last one I had the valve, the uh, switch it went out. That's a freaking pain in the butt valve. And it's two stage. That's great. Well, what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill this here. You get a regulator that might be froze up. Shut this back down. Let's crack that union, see if we got fuel after the regulator. There's a chance that maybe that thing's froze up. I've had that happen before. Now, I was just kind of thinking we didn't hear the valve click. So let's check, see if we got voltage coming to it first before we waste our time taking it apart of the gas uh, connection. Okay, we are getting voltage. Okay, let's put it back together and let's check amperage and see if it's pulling anything on that. When I hooked that common wire and stuff back up, it felt like, or I heard it click. So I think we're going to see some amperage here in a second. Let's start to click, 0.8 amps, 0.9 amps, sparking. The gas valve's working, you got a problem with the gas. Like I said, this, oh, helps you turn it back on. Let's try that again now. It wouldn't surprise me those connections weren't making very good on the gas valve. There's that amperage and no, no ignition. Well, did I call it or did I call it? I can smell a little something coming out, but you should be able to hear it whistling Dixie. Uh, the regulator's malfunctioning, what I'm assuming here. Uh, I see it happen sometimes on LP regulators. I would uh, hope that the gas has not been turned off in the back. No real good way to find out. Uh, like I said, I can smell a little something through there. At this point, when everything's closed because of the snow crap and nobody in town's going to have that anyway, uh, I'm going to pour hot water across it and uh, see if we can get it going. Uh, once it gets running, maybe we'll be all right. Uh, and then we should probably have to. Then we should probably get that uh, regulator replaced, because obviously the diaphragms are getting moisture in there and they're probably freezing into place. I'm gonna go grab a bucket of hot water and see what we can do with this thing. Otherwise, I don't know what else you can do. Get us a little bit of piping hot water here. Some of you're like, man, it's just gonna freeze again. You know what? What are you gonna do? You just tell them screw them. You gotta do something, dude. Always somebody bitching. Always an armchair warrior. Anyhow, they could always wrap it with uh, some freaking uh, heat tape if they really wanted to. Now, they weren't open yesterday at all because everything was closed completely yesterday. And uh, it probably didn't run a whole lot. That's hard to say. So let's go ahead and pour this on there and see what we get. It was a uh, LP company that kind of told me this trick. So let's see if it works or not. I've got it open still. That way it starts bleeding through. Let's see if this works. Look at that, there goes the gas. All right, we got plenty of gas coming through now. Think I'm crazy, don't you? Well, let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Get her juiced up, see what she does. Got her juiced back together. Let's do this one more time. There goes the draft motor, hopefully. Put on our blower door. Regulator's frozen. It's working. 
broken now. I poured hot water on it, but you may have to. It froze up again. So put a little more water on it. I got heat tape for 120 and 230 volt uh, deal. So we might just run some heat tape up to the contactor up there. Yep, there it goes again. That sounds a little louder that time. A lot louder. It just ain't a whole heck of a lot to really hook it up on. You're out around this thing, all that is a freaking spring. Yeah, it kind of. That ain't nothing more than a bracket just to hold it. I'm gonna pour some more water on it. He said it seems like it's been cold in there for a while. Once the ovens come on, usually it's not bad. But I'm thinking we're gonna need to wrap some tape on it. It's uh, 14 degrees, I think, right now. This is what we ended up getting. Uh, normally we got it in bulk, which is cheaper, but it doesn't come with a nice plug on it, or cord, I should say. And it takes time to make it, not to mention the time to go back to the shop and get it. Uh, normally I got that on my truck, but not so, not so much today. Uh, we're gonna run this through uh, an opening here somewhere, or I may have made a Romex connector and uh, get that thing up into that area there for power. Don't really have any fuses to add to it. I mean, for the most part, all this wiring in here is not rated for what that's rated for. Uh, it tripped out again. Let's uh, see what we can conjure up here. I'm going to try to, I don't know if I'm gonna just wrap all the way around it. I'd like to do a coil on the top, like a snake, but I think we're just gonna see what we can do as far as wrapping around it. It's a six foot one with a six foot cord. Now keep in mind, this is not the best idea in the world, but it's been done by the gas company before. I'm gonna squish this down with duct tape. I've got a couple wire ties I'm gonna to apply to this. That way I'm trying to get the heat on the bottom side of the diaphragm and the top side, pushing it down. That's what we're working on. That's what it's gonna look like before we do it. We'll get the duct tape on it first. That'll keep it kind of waterproof. Not that this is already waterproof. So then we'll see if we can wrap some sort of insulation around it to keep the heat in. This is self-regulating, so it's not gonna get overheated by uh, the multiple laps. Uh, that's right in your instructions. Because I know some people uh, may mention that, and they are right on some uh, some brands out there. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, this one here. That's the reason why we use this brand normally. See right there, uh, spiraled trace, blah blah blah, uh, straight trace. So it's uh, waterproof covering, all that crap. So anyhow, yeah, that's uh, about all you can do. I love these Green Lee quick hole change carbides you can switch the heads out it drills right through that nasty thick stuff we'll drill a hole through the bottom of it run a romex connector up through there be good to go you really should use two hands Let's see if we can't stupendous and with the way that bit's designed it keeps you from going into electrical panel hitting the uh, wires and uh we'll just run us a uh, romex connector through there bring our wire up through the bottom so we got some uh duct tape first insulation tape now and uh i'm gonna probably put duct tape around it again to try to keep that protected because you know that stuff can rip try to seal some of those holes try to keep the heat in i reset it once and it did not take off so let's see if the heat or the insulation tape has helped at all and uh, keeping the heat in to where it might actually warm it up and get it uh, going here. It's running. It finally uh, warmed it up enough. I'm half tempted, and this would look really kind of ganky, but I'm half tempted to put a little expandifoam around the edge corners and stuff, and maybe seal the top. That way if the rain gets on it, it falls off. We're not in that cold of weather that often, and we had some real extremes. I noticed that cap was a little loose, so we could have gotten some moisture down inside there. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it on that there. We're gonna let it run for a little while just to make sure it keeps running. All right, guys, it's Saturday. I decided to stop back over because I don't live too far from this place. But it's been running, so it must be working. Uh, just wanted to stop back in, make sure everything was working. Plus, I didn't have an ending for the video. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe, check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and until next time guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later!